right, so. Sorry, you're on Radford. No, okay, thank you. I'd like to call uh, this meeting of the Minor Site Plan and Subdivision uh, Subdivision Committee of the Township Park Symphony Troy Hills to order. Uh, announcement is made that adequate notice of this meeting has been given and that is being conducted in accordance with NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 6 XSEC of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance, please. Oh, wait, roll call first, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Diddy. Yeah. Mr. Napolitano. Here. Smith. Here. Present. Oh. <laughs> Smith. Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Mr. Matt. Present. We also have our board planner, Ms. Winter, our board engineer, Mr. Cangiano, and Ms. our Stein. board uh, attorney, Ms. Steinley. Okay. I'd like to pledge allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so who's appearing for? I guess first we have. Uh, oh, is if any the meeting is open to the general public. So if anyone has any business not on tonight's agenda, please step forward. Seeing none, uh, our first application is an only application is application 24-502-196 to 200 route 46 west llc um who's here representing is it you john okay um our orders are clear we got to have this done well before 7 30 for the general meeting mr chairman we will not be long okay good thanks okay without any further ado good evening to everybody uh, John Inglesino here. I'm a partner with the law firm of Inglesino and Taylor here in Persephone. We represent the applicant 196 through 2000 Route 46 West LLC. The applicant is proposing to convert a currently vacant building on the subject property located on the westbound side of Route 46 at 200 Route 46, aka uh, Lot 14 and Block 693, to a Safe Light windshield repair facility. The building previously contained a convenience grocery store, and again, it's now vacant. Satellite, uh, Safe Light has been in existence since 1947. It's the industry leader in the field of windshield repair services. You may be uh, familiar with its ad jingle, Safe Light Repair, Safe Light Replace. I would sing it, but, you know, probably not my highest and best use. Uh, it is uh, renowned for providing excellent convenient windshield repair services that are designed to get drivers back on the road as soon as possible. Safe Light has operated out of Montville uh, on Change Bridge Road in, in Pine Brook for the last 20 years, and it now wishes to close the Montville facility and move to a more desirable location here in Parsippany on Route 46. Montville's lost Parsippany's gain. Oh well. Um, as you'll hear, Safe Light is seeking minor site plan, or the applicant is seeking uh, minor site plan uh, approval to convert. Uh, this vacant building it's about 8500 uh, or so square feet into a uh, the repair uh, and replacement facility the size is not being changed there are no variances or design waivers associated with the application proposed use is permitted in the b2 highway development zone district uh, as an automobile uh, repair service use and uh, we have three witnesses tonight uh, we have mark walker who is the project engineer Seth Lieb, who is the project architect, and if need be, we have operations testimony available through Glenn Howard, who is the uh, Safe Lake District Manager, and again, he can provide operations testimony if needed. So without any further assistance, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to call Mr. Walker. Okay. Do the waivers real quick? Yes, waivers. Sure. Um, just a handful of waivers related to it being an existing site for on Form 3 contours. Um, floor plan wasn't completed by an architect. Uh, existing utility services, uh, storm drainage, site illumination, um, landscaping, truck study, and the environmental assessment report. We don't have any, any objections to those waivers. Okay. Um Anyone have any concerns about waivers? All right, I'll take a motion to uh, approve the waivers. So moved. Second, Smith. Okay. Um, all, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right.
Clark. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now we'll have Mr. Walker. If you please raise your hand, do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Please state your name, provide your last, spell your last name, and provide your address for the record. Uh, Mark Walker, W-A-L-K-E-R. Uh, business address is 21 Bowling Green Parkway, Lake Packer. I know Mr. Walker has been voir dire before this board several times. Uh, so I just ask him whether his licenses are still valid. They are. As an engineer in the state of New Jersey. Correct. So I would offer him as a witness. Expert witness. Okay. Any anyone have any concerns? All right. You're accepted. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we do have one exhibit uh, here tonight, um, which is on a 24 by 36 inch board. I've also handed out individual 11 by 17s. Uh, basically, it's the site plan uh, that we've submitted to the board, and we colored uh, in yellow the items that have changed on the. Uh, on this survey um, for this minor site plan submission. Uh, I've labeled the uh, exhibit as A1 with today's date, April 15th, 2024, um, which is tax day today. <laughs> um, and uh, so I'll just briefly go over the, the changes and maybe we can get into some of the zoning and other, other items as well. Um, so starting left to right, we have an existing freestanding sign. Um, the only changes to the freestanding sign will be just resurfacing the signage. Uh, that's it. The size will stay the same. Um, at the front of the building facing uh, Route 46, we will be uh, proposing a new sign that will be 3 foot uh, by 16 and a half foot building mounted sign meeting the uh, ordinance requirements. Um, currently today, uh, against the building, there are two uh, areas where there are large windows. And both of those, area, those areas are going to be removed and replaced with garage doors. Um, so those are those two yellow areas on the side of the building. And then we are proposing uh, two drive up areas in there so the vans Safe light vans can drive in there, and also uh, automobiles as well that are getting service could drive uh, into the building. Now, as as a result of those two drive-up areas, we are losing uh, four parking spaces uh, in that area, and then also just further to the north, there's a larger uh, yellow rectangle, which is a proposed loading space, which. Uh, meets the size required for the site, which is 12 by 26. Uh, and as per the ordinance, we need to have another area that's 12 by 26, extending beyond that area that allows room for maneuvering the vehicle. So we've shown that we comply with that. And in order to comply with that, we had to modify the island slightly, which is on the opposite, uh, opposite parking aisle. So Converting the space uh, to a loading space, uh, we also lost another parking space. And then modifying the island also required us to lose another parking space. So in total, we've lost six parking spaces, which sounds like a lot. However, the previous use was a grocery store, which had a much higher uh, parking requirement. We were at 83 parking spaces for the whole site, and now we're only at 54 parking spaces. So there's a substantial that's, reduction. That's required, you mean, required 54. Required parking, yes. Right. So substantial uh, reduction of parking spaces going from 83 to 64, uh, and that we're showing that we only need 54 parking spaces. So although we lost six parking spaces, we still have 10 extra parking spaces uh, on the site. Um, which is a big uh, change from the previous site where we needed a parking variance on the previous site. So we've effectively removed that parking variance. Um, we had, in going through our reviews with the planner and the engineer, um, we were informed that we had too many signs, so we had to remove a sign from uh, the side of the building to conform. And then also we were informed that even though we got a variance for not having a park or loading space for the grocery store, if we came in with this application, we didn't have a loading space, that would have triggered another 
variance, so we provided that uh, that space. Um, so uh, with that said, we don't need a variance, um, and we are more than conforming with our parking. I know there was a there was a, in one of the reports there was a discussion about traffic. Um, obviously, with the reduction of this many parking spaces, this type of use compared to a grocery store where people are coming in, buying goods, and leaving, this is a, this is a much less gen traffic generating type of use where the customers come in, they're getting their windshields done. If they're deciding to stay, they're going to be there for a half an hour, an hour, or more uh, to get their, their windshield done. So. Definitely a reduction in uh, the activity on the site and as well as the surrounding uh, road system. Uh, so it would be a reduction in traffic uh, impact to the surrounding area. So that was my brief testimony. I'd be glad to take any questions uh, if anybody has. So um, any, any board members have any questions? How about uh, any professionals? Ms. Winter? Just confirm that um, there's no proposed changes to lighting or landscaping besides that one island. That's correct. Yes, thank you. Mr. Cangiano? And I, I, I saw your submission last week where you agreed to, uh, uh, you know, uh, the trash enclosure, put the gates on that, and that you'll restrike the lot. Is that? That is correct. That is correct. The, the entire lot would be restriped, not just. Mm -hmm. the modification of the parking spaces in the front and the gate may actually already be on oh okay. we're working on that all right very good right. thank you okay good. um mr walker just one question on traffic the um did you have you obtained a letter of no state interest from the state on the change we did not. Use? i think you i think you need to i mean i think you're right about i, I believe you are right about the change in traffic being lower but <laughs> The state of New Jersey used to let any professional engineer write a letter to that effect. I don't think they do anymore. So I think you got to basically go to them because you're changing the use and you have an existing access to 46. So. All right. So uh, even though we're decreasing the number of trips, it should be a formality. You yeah. just got to go through the motions, though. But okay. you have a even if this site this site either has an access permit. Do you know or, the timing on that? Sorry to interrupt. Problem we have is, uh, and we're happy to do it, um, but we have a, a lease transaction that has to occur within a certain period of time because if we're going to capture them here, they got to get out of there, and so uh, out of Montville. So it, yeah, I have no idea what the turnaround time is, Mr. Cangiano. Any idea or not? Not tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, our uh, we we want to listen. We want to do whatever you want us to do. I, I'm just saying that. Um, that the we, hardship to us is going to be that they have a lease expiring in Montville and um, well it's another agency approval we don't have the authority to grant a, a variance from it a requirement so all, all I mean it could be something you need to get by the CFO I guess I don't know we could just say that you'll provide proof of that by the time this before the CO is issued That's we could do that Okay. All right. Got heads nodding in agreement, so okay. I guess that'll work. So, all right. Um, all right. Counselor? I just, I just have one question. Where's the fr the front door? Is the, it the front, facing 46 or? No, the front the door is actually on the, the side of the building. Near, near Route 46, there's a little uh, triangle, black triangle. Um, black triangle here? Yeah, right, right here. Oh, okay. That's the front door. That's the front Got door. Got it. Yep. And there's doors by the waiting area? There, there are, and our, our architect is watching through the okay. side Okay. Okay. Yeah. All quick, right. Quick question, just sure. uh, just for confirmation. So you mentioned we are losing six parking spaces, but we are not losing any ADA or handicap parking spaces. We are losing one ADA parking space, but we um, we are required to have three ADA spaces, okay. and we're providing six okay. total on the site. Right. Thank you. All right, Councilor. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Uh, at this time, I'd like to bring up our architect, Seth Lieb.
please raise your right hand. You swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the record. Sure. It's Seth A. Lieb, architect, L-E-E-B. And I'm located at 1719 Route 10 East in Parsippany, New Jersey, Suite 100. Thank you. Well, Mr. Lieb, you've appeared before this board numerous times, correct? I have. And your licenses are still valid? Yes, they are. You're a registered architect in the state of New Jersey? Yes, I am. Chairman? Jack? Okay. okay. Would you please describe Wait, the architecture? So, anybody have any issues? No. Okay. You're accepted. All right. Can you please describe the architectural aspects of the project for the board? Just real quickly, um, there was a question before. Um, A2, I guess. And we you should have, have marked to, the other um, one. Use the microphone. Here. I'm sorry. And was this previously provided to the board? Was this submitted? I think. I think it was. I'm not Dated 129-24, PB1. Yes. Yep. Sorry, so we don't need a marker. Need okay. Ready. So. Uh, um, it's floor plans. This is the way it exists today. It's a naked space. Um, the uh, previous tenant, the market, moved out. It's got two lavatories, proposing two more lavatories. It has a waiting room area here. Just to give the orientation, this is Route 46 uh, westbound. Here's the parking lot over here. So the entrance is in the front. There's a waiting area, some offices, and a break room. And then where the uh, uh, cars are, are uh, Rehabilitated, we'll call it, the, the glass. And as Mark said, um, basically there's glass, and I'll show you here. There's glass right here. We're, we are removing the glass and putting overhead garage doors. Um, please disregard uh, the extra sign. Um, the drawings were made before it was determined that we needed a variance for that. There was a sign there, so this sign on the side is no longer there. But basically, we're taking out this set of doors and windows this set of glass, putting in a garage door here, garage door here. That's the project. Okay. Um, any questions from the board members? Just uh, a question. The first one you you brought up, can you put that back up, please? Certainly. I'm sorry. This was uh, PB1, uh, two of three. It's drawing. Oh, that's yes. I guess I didn't see that one. One of these says uh, what, Route 152, U.S. 46, not 200, Route 46. This is, this two, here. This is 200. I don't know what you're looking here. That's not my drawing. Not your drawing. Got it. I'm just trying to orient all these. Yep, I'm right. sorry. Okay. All right. Um, the only other thing also is uh, the color on the outside of the building is changing. The color? Yes. What color is it going to be? It's going to be, we have a... Uh, uh, rendering here, and again, disregard the sign on the side. It's going to be black. Oh, like that's a, a problem. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Feel like I can? No. no. <laughs> okay. Any? I'll any? Just mark this as Exhibit A sure. two. Two. Um, colorized. Again, you can disregard the safe light sign on the side. And did your um, office prepare this, or is this? Actually, a uh, safe light did. And I'll just date it today's date. All right. Any board members have any questions on the architecture? All right. Ms. Winter, anything? No. Mr. Cangiano, anything? Nothing. Okay. And I have none. Thank you. Nothing further, uh, Mr. Chairman, unless you have questions. Was this there another copy? I don't mean to interrupt the, the A2 exhibit. Yes. Do we have different set of drawings? No that are done by somebody else that are in the packet that show a different. That's why we were trying we're to figure out. <laughs> what the board is, what the board is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, if you have questions, hold all the drawings. Yeah, if you have questions, ask them. Yeah. We figured it out. OK. OK. So does anybody feel like we need to hear from operations? All right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Can we quickly learn a little more about the traffic flow, how the cars are coming in? I mean, I see too many cars on the drawing, so I'm not sure how that flow works. Yeah. Uh, well, is this this witness, or do we need the operations person to answer? Okay, whoever, whoever can answer. I mean, I can just. Uh, what's your question specifically? Yeah. So, how is the uh, the traffic flow so, happening inside the facility? So, inside the facility, 
Uh, the cars come in this way and go into individual bays depending on the type okay. of vehicle it is. So if it's a van or an SUV, it's a little different than, uh, we'll call it a sedan. Um, so, and it's just set up differently so that the equipment, so when they bring the cars in, uh, they know how to orient it in the building. So they come from the one door and then there's one there's garage two door. two doors. Okay, yeah. So this way, this way, and these go like this. Okay. And they just back out, right, once they're done? They have it down to a science. Um, so, but I believe they back out. Okay. And are the customers driving into the bays or is it the Safe Flight workers? I would leave that to Safe Flight, but I'm 90% sure it's we'll Safe Flight. Safe Flight workers. workers, okay. And to confirm, all storage of materials is inside the building. Correct. There's no storage outside. Okay. No generators needed, anything else? We could add now. <laughs> AC, generator. Nope, nope. There's, okay. there's existing AC units right now on the roof. Um, I had designed the original building, uh, so there are all uh, units on the roof. And it's a usual eight to five type of thing. No, no overnight stuff. What is happening there? It, eight to five is their hours of operation. Okay. All right. I was negligent in not opening the to the general public to question Mr. Walker. So right now I'm going to ask if anyone from the public wishes to ask any questions of Mr. Lieb or Mr. Walker. All right, seeing none. Uh, Councilor, would you like to summarize? Uh, thank you for hearing the application and we appreciate the board's uh, support of it. Uh, I think it's a good project to occupy some vacant space on Route 46 and put it to good use for the township. Okay, any members of the public wish to make any statements for or against this project? Seeing none, I will close the public portion. Um, can I entertain? Do we need to go into conference, do you think, or just go to Just vote? to clarify, Mr. Chairman, the, um, the the one drawing has 152 U.S. 46. Does that need to be updated to, say, 200 U.S. 46? Uh, I I would say, first of all, we don't even, apparently we don't know who made this drawing. It wasn't Mr. Lieb, right? I think it's somebody else. It's a different layout of the interior. Yeah, it's a totally different so interior disregard, layout. Too. Disregard it. Disregard uh, this one? Well, I think maybe we can add a condition that uh, Mr. Lieb provides his drawings to our for our application. So yeah, which record. will be as represented. Okay. All right. Um, with that, can I entertain a motion on this application? Mr. Chairman, motion to approve application <laughs> number 24 colon 502 196 200 Route 46 West LLC 200 Route 46 Block 693 Lot 14, minor site plan for a windshield repair and replace facility and signage. Second, okay. Paul Tano. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. Um, Nora, can you call the vote, the roll? Yes, I can. Mr. Jadich? Yes. Uh, Ms. Napolitano? Yes. Smith? Yes. Matt? Yes. Your uh, application's approved. Thank you very much. Can I just ask real quick? There were no changes to the plans, correct? Technically, there's no changes, right? So once resolution is approved, we won't need compliance review for a revised plans, right? Part of Mr. Walker. The loading space, the plan with the loading space is related to Okay, not even the same, right? Just made it last. Okay. Perfect. Let me just confirm the original. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, I guess I gotta close the meeting. April 2nd, 2024. Okay, can I have a, with that, can I have a motion to adjourn the minor site plan committee? Motion to adjourn. Second, Smith. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Are you ready? You're on record. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to begin. The meeting of the Township of Persephone Troy Hills Planning Board, Monday, April 15, 2024, at 7.30 p.m. 
announcement is made that adequate notice of this meeting has been given and that it is being conducted in accordance with NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 6 at sec of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act. Nor would you call the roll, please. Mr. Didich. Here. Mr. DiPiero. Here. Mr. McGrath. Here. Mr. Matt. Present. Mr. Napolitano. Here. Mr. Shaw. Here. Ms. Smith. Here. Chairman Dinsmore. Here. We also have our board planner, Ms. Winter, our board engineer, Mr. Cangiano, and our board attorney, Ms. Steinle. All right. If we could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. I'd like to welcome back Miss Winter. <laughs> Since she had a, a, an indication that she might not be back, but she's back. Thank you for being back. <laughs> all right. Uh, this meeting is being open to the general public. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak on something that is not on our agenda for tonight? Hearing and seeing none. Uh, we have some resolutions. There are two resolutions. One that's in your packet, the other that was emailed to everybody. Um, and actually the resolution on who can vote uh, has both, which is good. So. Do I have uh, somebody willing to make the resol uh, move the uh, resolution and application number 23 colon 531? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Tadich. A motion to approve a resolution for application number 23 colon 531 SK3 Century Associates LLC 3 Century Drive Block 202 Lot 1.7 Zone ROL preliminary and final major site plan with C variance for the construction of a warehouse and related site improvements. All right, now before I ask for a second, our attorney has told me that there may be some minor adjustments to the language here. Yes, there were some minor edits, um, but nothing substantive. Um, one of the significant ones, but it's still minor, is on page four. Um, and also in the list of conditions and what was approved was that the steep slopes were marked um, slightly incorrectly instead of the tenth of hundredth place it was supposed to be a hundredth place so um, where it said 0.12 acres it's now 0.012 acres 0.34 acres is now 0.034 acres and 0.10 0.01 acres Oh, I guess that one was correct. Okay. So it was, those were some minor ones and then a few typos that were corrected. Um, but everything else was just minor. And then there was a clarification that the existing, the steep slopes were created by man-made and existing detention basin, an existing detention basin. So that was just clarified. Um, but other than that, no other substantive changes. Is everybody comfortable with that? All right. Do I have a second? Second. Go ahead. Second. Mr. Shaw, thank you very much. Uh, Nora, would you call the roll, please? Did each? Yes. McGrath? Yes. Math? Yes. Napolitano? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Smith? Yes. Dinsmore? Yes. Next, we have application 23 colon 533 T Mobile. Uh, is there somebody willing to move uh, that motion for that application? I got it. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Tano, motion to you. approve application uh, resolution for application 23 colon 533 T Mobile 1269 Route 46, Block 729, Lots 6.01, Zone 03. Minor site plan with C variants to construct a temporary monopole with antennas and electric service. Do we have a second? Second, Daddy. Uh, Nora, would you call the roll, please? Daddy? Yes. McGrath? Yes. Matt? Yes. Napolitano? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Dinsmore? Yes. All right, that leaves us with the one application we have on our agenda tonight. Uh, application number 23, colon 530, Onyx Equities to Hilton Court, Block 202, Lot 3.10 
An amended preliminary and final major site plan, major soil moving permit to construct a warehouse facility. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen Tombalock from Wiener Law Group, Parsippany, on behalf of the applicant. Okay. Mr. Chairman of the Board, we're going to try to keep this as as, uh, as simple and, and straightforward as we can this evening. If the Board recalls, slightly over two years ago, we appeared before the Board for site plan approval for a proposed warehouse to replace the office building that's now at 2 Hilton, which is kind of on the jug handle at Dryden by Route 10. The, we know uh, in an effort to develop the building, there's been considerable market input to, uh, to Onyx as to certain tweaks and changes uh, potential users would like to see to the building before they sign on the dotted line and either buy it or rent it. So we've taken that feedback from the market and we've revised the plan slightly, but but was uh, substantively we've, we've modified it. And you're gonna hear about the substantive changes tonight, both in terms of the size of the warehouse, the orientation of the warehouse, um, how it functions, because that's what the market told us is a better layout for us. So. Uh, we're going to have several witnesses for this evening. Uh, because the board is, is basically familiar with this warehouse application, having gone through it two years ago, we're going to start off kind of unusually with the architect. We have Brian DeBarbieri go through the proposed changes to the the building. And then after architecture, we'll go into site plan testimony from Franz Lackey and Louis Reyes. We have our traffic engineer, Craig Paragoy, who was the same traffic engineer from two years ago. If the board has any interest, the traffic hasn't changed. Uh, in terms of patterns and loading and things like that, but he's here tonight to provide an update as to impacts of traffic uh, from the site based on the, the revisions that we're making. And then last but not least, we have our planner, Michael Pasolano, to talk about several bulk variances that are triggered by the revisions that we're proposing this evening. So, Ms. Winter, do we go to waivers first before waivers we get into first. it? Yeah. So there are a handful of waivers um, we have on Form 5 for the floor plan, which was submitted but is at a larger scale than required, uh, proposed landscaping, which was also submitted but was done by an engineer instead of a landscape architect, the environmental assessment study, which had, we do not object to that given the amended application nature of this, um, and the combined preliminary final approval uh, site plans being separate sheets and again on form 10 the floor plans and that's all we don't have any objections to those all right do I have a motion to approve the waivers as presented by the uh, board planner motion approved Matt do I have a second second all in favor say aye Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Very good. So for my first witness, I would call Brian DiBarbieri, architect. Do you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name, spell your last name, and provide uh, your address for the record. Yes. My name is uh, Brian uh, D. Barbary, uh, D E B A R B I E R I. I'm an architect at the firm De Barbary Architects, located at 97 Chestnut Street in Rutherford, New Jersey. I received my Bachelor of Architecture from Virginia Tech in 2012, and I became licensed in the state of New Jersey in 2017. <coughs> uh, I am also licensed in three other states New York, Rhode Island, and New Hampshire. Uh, I've provided testimony at other planning boards in the state, including Parsippany, a couple years ago for this uh, application. Okay. Now, Brian, you were involved, even though your father testified during the first hearing, you were involved with the design of this project from pretty much day one, correct? That is correct, okay. yes. And your licenses remain in good standing? Yes, okay. they do. We would ask that Mr. DeBarber could be treated as an expert in architecture. Any questions on his qualifications? Hearing and seeing none. Thank you very much. All right, Brian, uh, you know, why don't you go through, um, I mean, again, the board has familiarity with the design, but since you've changed it, can you kind of reorient, kind of give a, an, an idea of what was previously approved and what you're proposing to change as part of this amendment in for architecture, knowing that Franz and Lewis will talk about the engineering. Certainly. I, I did bring some handouts uh, of the of 
what my uh, exhibits are. Uh, so would, why don't we mark would, one and like then I'll to, uh, hand them out? Okay. Yeah. When you mark them, I'll hand them out. So as mentioned, we were here a little over two years ago uh, for this site. And just to give an overview uh, of the building and its uh, current uh, orientation on the site, uh, we, we now have the loading area um, yeah, facing north um, northwest toward Hilton Court. Um, and the main entrance uh, to the building is now facing southeast toward Dryden Way. Uh, Campus Drive is to the, to the north. Um, of the building, and Route 10 is to the southwest. Brian, can I interrupt you? Sorry, sure. that what we're looking at right there—that's an SESI exhibit. Do you know if that was part of the package, or are we marking that this evening? Um, it wasn't. Okay, so let's mark that one as a, a one with today's date. If you could identify that for the record, that would be great. Does it matter where I mark it? No. Nope. Right. Zora, do you prefer to have it in the upper right corner? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. I've worked with planners before Mr. Cheswick and the Board of Adjustment always wanted it in the upper right corner. Thank you. All right, uh, so yes, I, I have uh, marked this uh, exhibit as A1, dated uh, 4 15, 2024. Um, uh, as, as mentioned, the, the civil engineer uh, will get more into the site layout and circulation, uh, and I'd just like to start by discussing um, the, the building design. So this uh, overall floor plan here, this was submitted uh, as, part of, as part of the package. Um, the, the footprint uh, did increase. Uh, we're now at a total footprint of 122,664 square feet. We were previously at 108,000. And as you can see in this floor plan, we are proposing um, two areas of uh, speculative office space, uh, each at 6,150 square feet. Um, and the building is designed so each each office area would have their own entrance. Um, there's no current plan to subdivide this building, but the building is designed to support that that flexibility if uh, desired in the future. Uh, as far as the building height, uh, the building height did not change. We're still fully compliant with the um, with the maximum building height of 45 feet. Uh, the interior clear height is designed at um, to be 36 foot. Uh, clear, which is which is in line with the the current trends and market demands for these building types. <clears throat> um, and just to go through some design features uh, of this building, uh, the, the building will be constructed of precast concrete uh, wall panels, and we did change the uh, the, the color uh, scheme of this building. Um, we, we've changed it to more uh, to feature more of a, a cooler earth tone color palette. So the, the main color is actually remaining the same, a light gray, but um, we, we've added accent colors of medium gray and uh, a, a blue, a bluish gray at the corners to define the entrance areas and also the, the building corners and also break up the facade. Um, the, the panels are designed to have recessed score lines. Um, to, to further break up the facade, and they are located to align with some of the facade elements, such as uh, the windows and uh, canopies. And so starting at the, let me bring up the drawing A2, which was also submitted as part of the package. We've added some color uh, for clarity. 
Uh, since you've added color, that wasn't in the uh, package. Can you mark that as exhibit A-2? Yes. So starting at the south elevation, which is the top elevation here, um, we have the entrance areas highlighted uh, by using um, high curtain wall glass and uh, metal canopies to provide weather protection. Um, we also uh, distinguish each office area um, by, by using the, the blue accent panels on the exterior um, facade, which span the width of the office areas on the inside. Um, and between the two office areas, uh, we have high clear story windows, which allow natural daylight to, to enter the warehouse area. Uh, turning the corner to the, to the east, east elevation, uh, we, we wrap the, the entrance glass and metal canopy around. Um, and we, we, I really think doing this, by doing this, we create a nice, um, attractive corner entrance. And we've depicted that in a 3D rendering, which I will mark as A3. I think that's a little different than what was given to us. So if you could do Correct. That. So I, I, I wanted to um, hand out the original design. Um, so basically, it's the orientation and also the color palette where the main difference is. We, we wanted to lighten the, the color palette. Um, we thought the previous design was a little bit too dark. We wanted to lighten the color palette um, to, to kind of help reduce the, the size, the mass, the scale of this building especially when viewed from the ground um, against the sky background. So this exhibit was prepared by your office? Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to mention that wrapping this entrance feature around does provide the opportunity for a nice lobby on the interior uh, of the building and also, also provides some means of wayfinding as you're driving down Hilton Court towards the building. Um, it allows you to see the, the uh, entrance canopy in, in, in glass. Um, and we, we continue the, um, the scoring pattern on this facade as well. And then we come around to the north elevation, which is where we have our, our, loading, our loading activity, our loading doors, um, and our drive-in ramps. Um, and again, you can see we, we continue the, the scoring pattern around with the high clear story windows and the windows here obviously allow for the light inside the warehouse, but also help to light up the interior loading activity on the interior of the building. Um, and we, we continue the same uh, design around to the west elevation as well. I, I, I do want to point out that um, I think the civil engineer did a did a great job in um, designing the the landscaping uh, around this building and this site. Um, the uh, I, I think the landscaping um, both both softens and enhances the the your visual transition between site and building, and I think they, they did a good job at that. And we've we did uh, do our best to represent that. In these in these 3D renderings, both in the the aerial views and the, the ground views, uh, we have also we did also add a monument sign detail to the to our drawing A2. Um, it's the same, um, pretty much the same size uh, dimensionally as the existing sign. But we, we want to update it to, to tie into the building design a little bit more. It's got the same coloring, and it's a, a concrete uh, plank, and it'll have this uh, score line um, to, to tie into the building design as well. 
And just to go through some uh, construction and safety features of the building, the building will be um, state of the art, uh, fully compliant with all building, life safety, fire safety, uh, energy um, codes. Um, it will be constructed of all non combustible materials, um, precast concrete wall panels, and uh, interior steel frame uh, roof structure and columns. Um, these precast wall panels can actually provide a fire resistance of up to four hours, depending on the thickness you end up going with. Um, other fire safety features include uh, upgraded sprinkler system. Uh, it will be an ESFR, which stands, stands for Early Suppression Fast Response. Uh, and this is an upgraded sprinkler system that's usually desired for these buildings because it it's, provides the best protection for the high-piled um, racking that's typically installed uh, in, these, in these buildings. Um, you see along the uh, elevations, we have personnel doors um, located about 100 to 125 feet on center. Uh, and these provide egress from the building, but they're actually more for the fire department access uh, into the building. It's a fire code requirement, um, and they will be painted to, to, to match the, the wall panels. Um, as far as roof equipment, these buildings, for, for as big as they are, they, they, they don't require that much uh, mechanical roof equipment for a building this size. Um, we'll probably have two to three uh, heating and ventilation uh, units on the roof, um, and each office area would, would have a, a packaged heating and cooling uh, HVAC unit. And we, we locate these um, typically 50 feet away from the building perimeter, so in no way would they be uh, visible from the, from the ground. And uh, they would, of course, be uh, fully compliant with all uh, state and local noise uh, requirements. Um, just some, some energy uh, features. These exterior wall panels, um, they, they have an insulated core, and they, they can provide a fairly high thermal resistance value. Um, and the roof will be fully insulated, so the entire building envelope will uh, fully conform with the latest energy codes. Um, the roof structure will be designed to support uh, future uh, installation of solar panels uh, if a future tenant or owner uh, opts for that. Um, all the uh, lighting uh, will be LED and will be on occupancy sensors. Um, the, the clear story windows, as mentioned, they allow uh, natural light, daylight into the warehouse, and that would help reduce the amount of artificial lighting that, that these, that these uh, buildings require. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. If the board has any questions for, for Brian as to the architecture, if you have any Members of the board have questions on this testimony at this time? Mr. Napolitano. Thank you. Uh, all right. I read the fire uh, department's report. Um, I, I guess they had no problem with it, but uh, all those trees in the way there, they're, what's the best way for a fire truck to get to that corner of the building? I guess that would be the southeast part of the building uh, to, the le to the left of Office 2. You know, if the fire's in the middle of that and the end. Is there going to be enough space for a fire to get as close as possible? Um, no, I, I mean, I think this question might be better served answered by the, the uh, site or, or traffic engineer, but um, I wasn't clear on the question. What was yeah, Mr. Reyes, who's our next witness. Oh, wait. Okay. Other members of the board have any questions on this witness, this testimony? No? I just had a question on building height. Um, it says it'd be less than 45 feet. Correct. And that includes uh, measured uh, the average perimeter grade, including the uh, loading dock area? Yep. Yeah. On our A2 uh, elevation drawing, we've uh, on each facade, we indicate what the average grade line is and uh, have the have the height um, measured, measured to Thank that. You. All right. There were some other documents passed out. Are they going to be? There going to be discussed okay. and if they're not then they have to be discarded okay, okay. and okay. 
There's no signage proposed on the building itself. Uh, currently, no. That would be the uh, responsibility uh, of the uh, of a future well, tenant. Only one sign would be permitted. So, if you do end up with two tenants and two signs, you need to come back to the board. Okay. All right. Now, you said that you intended to uh, stay and uh, fit in within all the noise requirements and the like. You've got a loading dock that's now facing a hotel, whereas before it was to the side, I believe. I, I, I was referring specifically to the rooftop equipment. Okay. I'm now referring to the use and the trucks that come in with backup keepers. Uh, I mean, that's not my expertise as the architect. Mr. Reyes can address that. Mr. Reyes, okay, because you're going to have to stick with the, uh, the state law Absolutely. on noise so that you're not competing with people trying to sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the architect's point of view, is the area where the trucks are going in within that area that's that's uh, requiring a variance for from the uh, setback? Uh, I'm sorry. Well, there's a variance required. Uh, the front yard setback. The front yard setback. But that's from the rear of the building. Oh, where from Dryden White. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so you're not any closer to the hotel, although the loading docks may actually be closer. I'm saying this so that your planner can hear me. Mm -hmm. And he can talk to me and discuss how it's not going to be a problem for the hotel to have an active 24-7, 365 loading dock operation facing the hotel. Yeah. Okay, we'll get to it. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any members of the public have any questions on this witness and this testimony? Hearing and seeing none. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you. I'd like to call my next witness, Louis Reyes. And Louis is a professional engineer with SESI SESI Engineering. So, Louis, let's get you sworn in first, and then you'll give the board your qualifications. If you please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the record. Uh, my first name is Louis, L-U-I-S. My last name is Reyes, R-E-Y-E-S. Um, I live in Clifton, New Jersey. Do you want to give the board uh, the background of your education and your professional experience? Because we're going to qualify as an expert. Yep. So I've been working in, as a civil engineer in the industry for about nine years. I've worked on numerous projects across New Jersey. Um, I have my Bachelor of Science in, at the New Jersey Institute of Technology. I got it in 2015. I'm a licensed uh, professional engineer in the state of New Jersey. And I have previously testified in New Jersey as an expert witness. And those are your licenses in New Jersey in good standing? That's correct. Okay. I would ask that Mr. Reyes be uh, treated as an expert in professional engineering. Any questions on the traffic engineer's qualifications? Hearing and saying Is no. traffic? No, it's no, no, it's it's civil. Civil. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Louis. Now, Louis, you were involved with the design of this, both in the earlier iteration and this iteration. Can you, uh, as, as Brian did, can you go up to the board and then kind of give the board an overview of what the substance thing have changed as to the civil site design, kind of highlighting the orientation, and then we'll get into the substance of uh, reliefs that we're asking for. Okay. So, um, basically, as the architect um, testified on, um, the building and the site layout in terms of where the loading dock and the car parking are have been flipped, so front uh, in the front previously used to be car parking, now it's loading in the front, and there is car parking along the east and southeast portion of the building. Um, the building did get slightly larger. Um, it's now uh, it increased by about 15,000 square feet, and the building is now 123,000 square feet approximately. So. Why don't you go in and talk about each of the disciplines that you worked on in terms of 
how the parking's going to work, the circulation, um, and so again, highlighting what's changed compared to the, the the warehouse that was approved two years ago. Yeah. So um, the proposed use of the warehouse um, stayed the same. It's a permitted use in the Specialized Economic Development District 10 zone. Um, and that was what was approved in the uh, the approved application. Um, now the so there's 25 loading docks uh, in the front and two driving ramps along the east and south portion of the building. There's um, 111 car parking spaces and 11 trailer parking spaces on the west side of the building. The east and south car parking uh, will have 48, 80, uh, sorry, four ADA spaces, three EV make ready spaces, and one ADA EV make ready space. Um, this is a spec warehouse. Um, a tenant has not been secured yet, but a sample distribution table was provided to calculate the required number of parking spaces. The number of employees, proposed number of shifts, and the maximum number of employees on each shift will depend on the tenant. Um, based on our experience with warehouses and the feedback we got from the industry, 111 car parking spaces is sufficient for the use. Um, as for site circulation, so we are now proposing um, two driveway entrances which are delineated, um, separated by a striping and a 10 foot wide landscape area. So the previous application had one shared driveway for trucks and cars, so this provides uh, better circulation and better driver safety. So the trucks fr come in from the northeast driveway and then they get to the loading dock or make their way to the trailer um, spaces and then they make their way out. Similar to the car um, parking area, the, the car, the employee parking lot, they'll go through that northeast entrance and then make their way to the southeast and east parking lot. Um, and now, so for the emergency access only, there is an emergency, there's two emergency access only driveways which are existing access points to the site now. Um, but they have been repurposed for emergency vehicles in an emergency situation. So that's the only time those two driveways to the west and to the east will be used. Are those chained up? Or? Yeah, yeah, we have a uh, proposed chain on the, on the site plan. Um, the project architect already talked about the mounting assignment, but just to, to you know, it's located adjacent to the truck only access driveway. Um, as he mentioned, um, this, no other sign is proposed at this moment, um, and it will be compliant with the ordinance. Uh, I want to talk about the, so the proposed development um, is proposing retaining walls. Um, one of the retaining walls that I want to mention is on the western side of the property, um, by the, in between the trailer parking and the loading docking. And that, a portion of that retaining wall is um, proposed to be greater than four feet in height. The reason for this is that I think it's about uh, maximum five feet, five feet. So the reason for this is that the loading dock area is, uh, is typical for, war for warehouses that they're lower, um, they're four feet lower than the finished floor elevation and the car parking area. So in order to properly construct the truck court area and to feasibly tie into the um, surrounding existing grades, um, this retaining wall was designed. Lewis, knowing that, I mean, there shouldn't be anybody walking around that area, but is the applicant amenable to putting in a safety fence to the extent required by code for that wall? Yeah, we can put a uh, four foot high fence. How high was the retaining wall? Five feet. Five feet. I, I believe this one, is this the one that's technically in the front yard because you have um, um, dried in and root 10 there? No, it's this one. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's the front because it's in the adjacent lot next to us in that point. If oh, okay. Uh, the, there is an area. Um, it, it might be the one. The retaining wall I, on the west side, I have so it. So it could be the one that is a part of the access ramp for root 10. Okay. So we needed that. 
um, that retaining wall in order for a fire truck to be able to come into this southeast um, parking lot and make this, ha this hammerhead was designed for a turnaround area. Um, the retaining wall is to help support that emergency turnaround. Is that retaining wall in the front yard south front? Um, yes, that that one. So that one has a, has a variance? Correct. It's over four feet. I think it's four feet. Yeah, it's four feet. Um, as for utilities, we're taking the same approach. Um, for this one, the, we got approval from the Water Department of Pacific for this amended application. We worked with them to get an approval. Um, we will be reusing the water service connection to Hilton Court and Route 10 as uh, as feasible as depicted on the plans that were approved by them. Um, there was a question from GEPI regarding a sampling detail on our detail sheet, so I'll just go into that. Um, the sampling detail shown on the detail sheet on the site plan set um, was, so that is, for, um, the water department required that a temporary sampling tap be provided on each new section of water main for the purposes of taking total chloroform bacteria samples. So once that sample is done, it, it will be taken out but they required this to be on our detail sheets. Um, as for landscaping, there will be a mixture of lawn, wildflower, deciduous and evergreen trees and shrubs to provide a aesthetically appealing site. The loading area in the front will be screened from Hilton Court by a combination of grading and landscaping. So Hilton Court is at elevation 301. The loading dock is at elevation 292. So it's about nine feet down. Um, and also, trees and shrubs will be provided along the front here on um, um, the cul-de-sac of Hilton Court. Uh, so we don't see an issue of, for screening of the loading docks. As for, as for lighting, it's similar to the old projects, LED fixtures, mixture of pole mounted and building mounted lights. Um, they, they will provide no spillage over the property line except for in the locations where safety out of the like vehicular access areas, um, the entrances. As for stormwater management, uh, the project will be designed to meet the township and NJDEP stormwater management regulations. Um, stormwater is collected, treated, and detained at the proposed bioretention basins located on the southeast portion of the site, and then there's previous payment systems along the car parking area and also on, along the western portion of the, the trailer spaces. Uh, these are green infrastructure practices and the proposed bioretention basin and proposed paving system will discharge to topographically to the same area south of the site as existing conditions. Um, I want to jump into the circulation plan now. So. I provided two um, circulation exhibits. I'll go into the fire truck. Then there was the, that one. Was that submitted with the with the application package? Or so, was so it was a part of the plan set, but now it's highlighted and it has um, with some colors. Yeah. So, so I can I can mark it. Yeah. So I think we're up to A4. If you mark that A4 with today's date. So A4 is going to be a colorized circulation plan. So this is the colorized um, fire truck circulation plan. Um, hopefully this answers your question, but the top left inset is called is labeled the fire truck west side. So a fire truck is expected to come in through the truck access only driveway and then they will make their way into the fire access lane, and from there, um, there's a maximum 150 feet from where a fire truck can back out, and also the fire truck from this distance can pull the holes for the tub. If, if there's a fire along the southwestern portion of the building, you can get to it. Um, for the northeast inset, they will the fire truck inside. There was, uh, I, I already spoke about this, but it's the hammerhead. So fire trucks can go through the car access area through the parking lots and when they hit the southeast car parking they can make this turn around at the hammerhead and then exit the site. 
the southwest, oh, sorry, the, the bottom left inset fire truck entrance just shows a fire truck entering it and exiting the the property. And then I, I want to make a note of the bottom right inset, so just so everybody understands the configuration of this landscape slash striped area. So a fire truck, uh, this area that is delineating and separating the, the fire, uh, the truck only access and the car parking access, a portion of it is striped before it becomes this 10 foot landscape buffer. Uh, and the reason for this is that it allows for a fire truck to be able to do this turnaround maneuver to go to the car parking area. And they can um, easily do that without needing to exit the site and vice versa. So they could go from car parking to truck only. Um, I wanna, I'm going to flip this board to the other exhibit. I'm going to mark it as A5. And if you could describe it, Paul, so after you mark it. So A5 is the circulation plan, which was submitted but highlighted and have um, the colored circulation of the WB67 trailer. So the top left inset and the top right labeled as WB67 trailer storage. Um, the trucks make this. So in order for the truck to back into the trailer storage area, they need to they need to do a 180 turnaround maneuver and then they back into the trailer spaces. So that, that in combination with the fire truck access in this, in this fire lane is what determined the configuration of this trailer storage area. It's, backed, it's set back a little bit so that a, a WBC system can make this maneuver. The bottom left inside just shows um, tractor trailer WB67 is going into the loading area and then the loading docks and then the bottom right inside shows um, track the trailers exiting and entering the site using the truck access area. Um, that's the end of my, but was there a question that I missed? No, no question that you missed, but I would like to just we'll run through uh, in Christine's most um, recent review letter, she gives the entire bulk summary. So I'd like to just go through, and if you can provide technical testimony as to the several variances that are triggered. Now, we've talked about the front yard setback. We talked about the wall height. Now, one of the variances that we're seeking tonight involves the maximum driveway size. Um, there's a 24-foot requirement, and we're proposing 40 and 26 feet. Can you explain why those dimensions were chosen? Yeah, so I think because the, so the, the driveway on the north portion of the site, um, the the reason why it's so wide was to allow for this fire truck to make that turnaround area versus having the landscape island bump out all the way to the right of way, which will make it more difficult for the fire truck to make that maneuver. One of the also, there's a, um, a parking setback on the side yard that where 20 feet is required, we're only proposing 18. Can you explain why like that two feet couldn't be met? Yeah, so we will meet it, and the reason why is because we originally had 112 car parking spaces, and we're going to eliminate one in order to meet that requirement. Um, the last one, I think you already covered as to why the parking is proposed for the um, for the side in the front yard. Um, but unless the board has any questions, Mr. Reyes, I don't. I think he's covered most everything. Have members of the board have questions on this witness? Okay, I do. I do uh, have the question of access to vehicles all around the building from the fire department's report, because he very specifically says he wants clear access for emergency vehicles around the building. Now, he didn't make it as clear as it, he might have, but how do you interpret that? So what I recollect from the fire officials' comment is that they had they didn't have any comments on site circulation. Their comments were regarding the movement of some minor movement of some hydrants. I, I just quoted from the letter. 
I'm going to pull up the letter. Chairman, is this the October 23rd letter? Uh, yes. Okay. It's in the penultimate okay. sentence. Yeah. Lewis, I have the letter here. Lewis, in the October 23rd um, memo from District 6 Fire Chief, he says, and I'll read the, the penultimate sentence, also, keep clear access for emergency vehicles around the building. Can you explain how you're satisfying that? Yeah, I mean, um, so we're, we're um, providing clear access. Um, I didn't take that as that the fire truck needed to come around the southwest building. Is that you're not putting obstructions in the way of that area because they can still get to it with a fire hose. And we're keeping that area clear. We're not proposing any trees or any other obstructions for them to get to that portion of the building. That's awful tight. <laughs> Was the the past application didn't didn't they require to go all the way around the building, and it did go all the way around the building, if I recall from the last application, you regular cars couldn't drive on it, but the fire truck could. I thought in the first the first approval. Correct. So the original application did have a an emergency. Um, uh, what do you call it? A grass paper that wrapped around the southwest portion of the building for access then. But we are meeting code because we are um, allowing for a fire truck to be able to come up to the point where they need to get the hose around to the southwest portion of the building. We uh, measured it. And to us, it didn't seem like the fire official had any comments on this. I feel like he would have been more direct in his comments. Uh, we, I will in the, be speaking with them tomorrow. Um, I'm the director of fire prevention also, so okay. uh, I will speak to them about being more clear because you, you're correct. If he wanted it to be all the way around and you didn't propose that, he should have said he wanted that versus telling you that he needed, you know, he wasn't very specific. And, and um, I think it wasn't one of the comments at the end. He said, looks good. Yeah, so you so it, it didn't make it sound like he was denying it. So you're right. It, it's kind of unclear exactly what he wanted. Lewis, just to kind of go into this, assume that um, the fire department reconsidered and wanted. Is there a way to put grass pavers in, as in the prior proposal, to in theoretically allow an emergency vehicle to travel around the entire uh, circumference of the building? Um, the answer to that would be no, because uh, we will then be going into the 25-foot riparian zone required by DEP, and we can't uh, place any any type of uh, vehicle access in that area. Okay. So what, what changed between applications? Did the building get bigger? The yeah. building got slightly bigger, yeah, by 15,000 15, square feet. the ability to circulate around the, road, around the building because of the riparian buffer. Correct. Okay. Did it also get pushed to the east? It's like farther, farther. Uh, right in. Right. Yes. So the bays were on the other side of the building uh, in the side. previous. Yeah. They're on. Uh, so the building was uh, more centered. It got shifted back for the loading docks, and then it got made. Uh, it got shifted <laughs> the location more to the. Uh, back end of the site. Just to follow up on the fire department letter. So they have in this packet, there's a letter from them from October 23rd. There's a copy of your plan in that. And then I see a December 20th correspondent from the District 6 fire chief. So what kind of correspondence or, or have you had with the fire department? after the October letter? So we, um, 
our plans currently have the fire hydrant um, to the locations that they wanted them, and they have the fire department connection. Um, we haven't done a formal resubmission to them. We did that plan was to resubmit it to the water department, so we just need to package this up and send it to the fire chief. No, okay, Chandler, there's a should be conditional on fire department any additional fire department comments. Yeah. Mr. Cacio, there was, I, I noticed, it's kind of separate, but the fire protection subcode official, Mr. Flenner, wrote a memo. He He's responding as the, as for the construction, the construction department. He's the assist, he's the fire subcode official, but he's also the assistant construction official. So he's commenting as our construction official, not in the capacity of fire. Got it. Thank that you. is separate. That's your fire chief, who's a volunteer who's separate than the construction who are employees. So they're like separate agencies. Yeah, and I, I took a look at this uh, comment. We're happily going to comply with the yellow striping that should be identified as fire lanes. We're trying to, in more applications, have the construction department comment in case there's something afterwards when you've been you've done with the board, you're done with zoning, you're in construction, and they make comments. We said to them, well, if you want to make those comments, then you should be reviewing now. So NOR's now getting those applications to them. Fair so enough. you'll see that, but it's not as the capacity of the fire chief who has the, the say as a volunteer for the fire uh, department. Mr. Okay. Uh, any other questions by members of the board? Just one. Do you have any figures that show this riparian buffer? I'm just curious. Um, they are on the site plan set um, that was submitted to the age. Yeah, and and uh, just to follow up on that question, can you give us some feedback? You mentioned meetings with the DEP, um, but I've not seen any documentation of uh, discussions with them. Uh, the riparian buffer is uh, a 50 foot required. Yeah, so we got this project previously approved with the NJDEP, so these riparian buffers that we have shown are what the NJDEP want. We will be going back to the NJDEP with the major modification. And uh, what permits did you get from them, or what, what documentation do you have? Uh, we can submit the documentation of the approved uh, old site plan. Yes, that should be a condition of this. Yeah, but we're, site plan. Correct, but we're going to also get a major modification from them. So we'll have two permits, one for the old warehouse and one for the new warehouse. Thank you. Well, just tell me what it is so that the whole board can hear. Yeah, so it's located, it, so, all right, I should be more clear. Is it labeled TOB, top of bank? That's the top of the stream, so let me be more clear. There's a stream that um, hugs this, the north, the southwest to the south portion of the property, that stream in existing conditions is piped underneath the existing parking lot and then it runs southeast underneath Dryden Way. Um, we are, uh, as part of this application, the top of bank, the riparian zone, it is, there's an inner, yeah, 50 feet from the top, of from the top of bank, but then there's an inner 25. So there's a, a 25 and a 50 distance from the top of bank. I'm sorry, I don't follow. Yeah, sorry. So the only difference is just that what is regulated. So the emergency access vehicle that was discussed, there are things you could do in the the last 25 feet, but in the inner 25, you can't um, put it put anything there. So are there. you saying that like you have to get permits to do the other 25 too, right? Yeah, we're going to get the permits. Oh, so you, okay, so you're going to get uh, okay. You yeah, we're, we're going to go back to DP with a major major modification permit. But the bottom line is there's 25 feet of the top bank that's inviolate. You can't touch it. Yeah, we can't touch that. Okay. I got a couple questions. Uh, just to follow up on the emergency or the secondary access points. Uh, um, I see the one going to the Hilton lot 309 is labeled emergency access and chain. Um, the other location to the north lot 311 is that is that uh, a cross access uh, easement or is that emergency as well? So that's only for the purposes of emergency. Okay, so I update your plan to chain that. And uh, it is. It should be chained on the plan. If it's not, we will. It does. It says stick on this one. 
on the site plan, it should say that it's chained. Okay. Okay. Not. Okay. But it's it's chained within the site. You should have it near the so that you don't get caught in the throat. You You're saying chain it by the property line? Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. And then uh, moving on, we talked about the DEP. Uh, oh, EV spaces. You'll have to revise your EV spaces and your ADA parking spaces. Um, as as it's proposed, you're combining your it appears that you're combining your ADA handicap uh, van space with the uh, EV space. You need to separate them. Understood. So we'll just add an extra ADA space. Um, you answered my question about the um, uh, sampling. That was very interesting. I've not seen that before. Uh, do you agree on the utility plan? We had several comments on the utility plan adjustments as well on the stormwater management report and drainage. Uh, will you um, agree to comply with those revisions requested? Yeah, we will, um, we will work with you and we will um, work on getting those complied. Right, and uh, the EV space, one EV space needs to be ADA. So we have that. Your, what you were saying was that the ADA EV space can't be counted towards the regular ADA. Correct. So yeah, we, are, we already have an ADA slash EV space. We just need to add one more to comply with just the ADA part. Yes, they need to be separate. But Understood. I think you understand. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then going back to the landscaping plan and that the loading docks are fronting um, or facing uh, the frontage on two Hilton or, or uh, at Hilton Court. Uh, can you give it a little bit more detail? It doesn't look like it's very elaborate. It looks like you can use a little bit more screening, landscape screening along the frontage near Hilton, um, along the frontage of Hilton Court. What do you have for the landscaping there? It doesn't. I see you have low wildflowers on the slope. Can you just go into that a little bit? I have it written now. Yes, so we are proposing red oak, eastern white pine, and white flowering dogwood trees in the front. Also, wildflower and Coalberry, red chokeberry, choke traditional pink azalea, and bearberry. So, as I discussed before, the Hilton Court is at like elevation 301, the loading docks are 292, so even the shrubs are providing enough screening because it's nine feet down from Hilton Court. What's the spacing and location of your white pine? Um, I can get you an answer right now. Thank you for bringing a scale. <laughs> About 50 feet? Yeah, but so since that screening, I mean, 50 feet apart doesn't really give you the visual screening. Um, we're, we're happy to propose some more screening in the front. I don't know if the planners give any comments on that as well. But. <laughs> I'd agree more screening 50 feet apart is street tree spacing. It's not buffer spacing. That, that's fine with us. Um, I think that was everything. Thank you. Thank you. Getting back to something that the chairman commented on, Andrew, is hotels, do they count for residential for the, um, for the, the uh, noise impact? It's a good question. I don't know the answer. Uh, maybe our planner knows. I, I would lean toward their commercial. I mean, there's still standards for noise for commercial, though. If I could add some flavor to this. Uh, within the past six months, I think the town and, and this board have rezoned uh, the other property diagonally across from us, uh, Seven Campus Drive. That's now going to be a future oh, yes. warehouse. So the Hilton is going to be, at least on two sides, penned in by uh, warehouses. Yeah. Well. On a different application, we spent a whole lot of time on noise. 
and that's why I'm asking. It's uh, I but guess typically in the warehouses I've done, when the refrigerated warehouses, those are those can be noisy because not only do you have the refrigeration equipment cranking away, you have the trucks that are. This is not a refrigerated warehouse, so it's. Um, well, I but, mean, let's put it this way: we had another application that was next to a residential townhouse development, and it was not refrigerated, and without. And I, a noise wall had to be added to ensure compliance with the state regulations on noise. Yeah. And yeah. so, I mean, I guess my question was, to what extent has that been explored in this case? And I'm, I am curious if hotel counts as residential. Right. I'm not aware that it's residential, but um, because the state standards cannot be varied, I mean, they are, they, you have their performance standards. If noise becomes an issue at this site, it has to be addressed either by screening the equipment, by putting in acoustic buffers around the air conditioning equipment, if that's the cause of it, or, and I think it was done in Wayne, there's an acoustical wall that was done at a refrigerator warehouse in Wayne. They're not the prettiest things, but that's one of the things where it had to be built. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the source for the noise the on that other application was the trucks, right. not... But again, the that's one of the things where... What the stops it papers. from becoming a refrigerated warehouse? Nothing, but if but if it does crank up the noise, the noise has to be met. It can't be you can't exceed it. Right. Otherwise, the county. I mean, will shut this down. board can't stop it. So once it's built, it, in theory, can become a refrigerated warehouse. It could, um, but then the place has to be modified to make sure you don't exceed the 50 or the 55 at night. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're shut down. There's that's that's not even lim you can't bury that. So. There'll have to be a lot of thought put into modifying this if that's the direction this this looks. Is that goes. something this would come back to this board if they change no. that? No. If we're no. changing the site plan to add clad walls. If you if yeah. you submit to zoning as two new tenants with interior renovations and you don't change the site plan, I will issue the permits and I will not stop it. Well, we did the, remember hundred Jefferson. If you change yeah, something change outside, yeah. if you change the the anything on the, any of the parking, you change anything. But if say you have a tenant who goes in and changes nothing, and just becomes a new tenant with renovations, it wouldn't trigger a site plan because there's nothing on the outside. The use is permitted. That's possible, but the refrigerator warehouses have different dock doors. It's just laid out differently. It's laid out differently. And and. It, well, like we did 100 Jefferson, it'll have, it'll have to come back before this board. Okay. Oh, Lewis, Lewis, you want to add something? Yeah, so what I would like to add is, as I described before about the previously approved site plan, is that the building was closer to Hilton Court. And we, we did, in the previously approved application, have loading docks on the northwest corner of the building, so it's not that much further from where the loading docks are proposed in the front. We unfortunately it's been a long time since, so I don't remember exactly. And without having them side by side to compare what we approved, I couldn't I can, remember exactly I can, what we approved. I have no, it's nothing. fine. I'm just saying that it's hard to remember. Right. Again, it, it, if if the trucks are beeping away and it's becoming an issue, and it's it'll have to be addressed. There's no like that we can't talk our way out of that. We have to deal with it. Mr. Napolitano. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for all this testimony, by the way. The trucks uh, that are parking, are they only the ones that are delivering and leaving? It's not like no outside companies? No. Okay, it has to be someone that delivers there or takes out. Correct. Okay, and then there was another note from the Morris County Planning Board that mentions that your the, the fire truck plan, it says that uh, a single axle fire truck was the length of approximately 39 feet was used uh, in your analysis, but then they said it's recommended that the larger tandem axle uh, tower letter that services that there should be used in circulation analysis. Did you guys change that? Um, not for this presentation, but we were aware of the, of the comment and we did run it with the larger truck and okay. we had no issues. So we're going to resubmit to have the county. Thanks. Anybody else? Christine, do you have? Yeah. Um, just note we're going to revise the plans to remove a parking space. We'll be at 111 and can we also revise the plans to show that it's a front yard setback along Dryden and Route 10 and not a rear yard setback? You know, it looks like the rear yard, but technically it's a right of way. So um, the other question I had is regarding the parking. The previous approval included 127 spaces and a smaller building. This one you're proposing 111. Can you tell me how you got to that different calculation? 
Yeah, so I mean, the so the previous uh, approved application was um, it was overparked a bit. So I mean, the industry is always changing. We always get feedback from the industry, and our experience with, with experiences with warehouse keeps um, expanding. I mean, 111 spaces is it's more than enough for um, this size of a warehouse. We don't see an issue. All right, that's all. Okay, anybody from the public have any questions of this witness on this testimony at this time? Hearing and seeing none, yeah. Councillor. Thank you. Um, Mr. Paraguay from Dynamic Traffic is here this evening, and I'm going to ask the board, does the, would the board like to hear from Mr. Paraguay as to of his updated traffic uh, comments? He submitted a two-page updated memo. I, I'm going to look down to the engineering side of this board here and see. I'm actually interested in the circulation of the double driveway and any conflicts that you see. Uh, I know it was testified it was uh, optimized or um, um, well laid out. Can you, from a traffic standpoint, can you comment? Let's get Craig up. So let's let's swear in Craig Paraguay from Dynamic Traffic. It sounds like we're going to make him earn this pay. <laughs> Usually, when somebody says, "Do you want to hear from the traffic engineer?" The board's part is hard. You forget Gordon's. He was the first one saying it. <laughs> you please raise your right hand. Do you sure. swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And please state your name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the record. Sure. My name is Craig Paragoy, P-E-R-E-G-O-Y, business address 245 Main Street, Chester, New Jersey. Now, Craig, you've previously testified before this board, and you've been qualified, but just for, since it's been you know, a while, can you give the board the benefit of your qualifications to testify this evening as a traffic engineer and let them know if your license is remaining good staff? Uh, sure. I have a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from Virginia Tech. I'm a licensed professional engineer in New Jersey. been doing traffic engineering for 24 years now. Testified in Park Sydney many, many times and pretty much every night throughout the state. And your license remains? My license is current. Any questions about his qualifications? Hearing and seeing none. Right. Councilor. Thank you. Craig, now you did the original traffic impact statement for this design. You provided an updated report when it was modified. You heard uh, Mr. Cangiani, who wants to hear from you concerning the circulation and the, the, the how well those driveways will function. Can you at least address Mr. Cangiano's concerns and then if the board is interested, they can run through your numbers. Yeah, sure. I won't bore you with the numbers if I don't need to. You're, you're talking about the, the access to Hilton Core where we sort of have the car and the truck. Yeah. I think it's a better plan to have that separation of the cars and trucks because in the other plan, you, you would have had truck backing maneuvers where passenger vehicles could have been, which makes me a little, you know, a lot of times you have that with a warehouse and you have to. This, we were able to take advantage of the ability to separate it, so I think it's an improvement. The, the downside, I guess, is the limited frontage and having those driveways proximate to one another. But you heard from the prior testimony that we do, we're not extending that landscaping island all the way to Hilton Court. So you're going to have perfect visibility of one or the other. If this, if these were, if this was a shopping mall or really high volume, we, we would look for to get a little bit more separation. But in this case, they're going to sort of function as one driveway. It's it's a fairly low traffic generator, particularly in terms of trucks, and they're they're sort of offset. You usually have the office employees coming in the morning and leaving in the evening, and the trucks are in out throughout the day. So I think at the expense of those two driveways being proximate to each other on a very low volume road, it's a much better plan to have that separation of the cars and trucks. You know, Craig, since you're up, do you want to just give a brief overview of what changed with respect to the traffic impacts of this design versus the previously approved design? Sure. Uh, what, what we do um, when we have a revised plan like this, we obviously came before you. We had a full traffic impact study, a big thick document, and analyzed several intersections. We looked at a bunch of other developments that were improved in the area. So we come, when we come back and see a revised plan, the first thing I do is how much different is the traffic generation of what the site is versus what was approved. Uh, the building size did get bigger, but in the scheme of a warehouse, it's a very small amount of uh, increase in size. And what's kind of interesting is that the manual, the trip generation manual that the ITE or the Institute of Transportation Engineers publishes that we use to forecast traffic um, is based on the building size for a, a warehouse like this. Since we did the original report, they issued a new addition. So if I rerun the numbers, even though it's a slightly larger building, it actually comes out to one less trip during the morning peak p 
period, the busiest hour in the morning, and exactly the same in the evening. So the reason that happened is between, it was the 10th edition was the last time, now we're on to the 11th. Between those two, more warehouses were studied and counted. So obviously they brought the number down. So we're seeing less traffic generated from warehouses. Either way, if I compared apples to apples, 11th, 11th, 10th, 10th, the increase in traffic is minimal. You know, you, you wouldn't notice a difference. And part of that, you remember the prior approval, there was a two-story warehouse, I believe. So the footprint got a little bit more bigger than the actual square footage of the building. I think the approved building, even though the footprint was 108,000 or so, uh, the building was 113,400 square feet. And now we're up to 122,664. So that, that little bit of a difference is all it is. And in pur uh, for purposes of truck movements, like during construction for soil moving, demolition, those types of things, has anything changed with respect to the routes that type of intensity or does it really just remain the same no everything is the same as what was previously approved in terms of any, anything beyond the boundaries of this site is the same as what was already approved i have another question mr paraguay <laughs> court you had to since have it one, came up you? earlier you had to have one. the parking in terms of how much you got um are you comfortable that this parking is above the average or close to the 85th percentile from ITE data? Yeah, it, it absolutely is. I think that we're at, it's almost at one per thousand. I think it's 0.93 or so per thousand. And the, the average peak uh, for uh, ITE East is 0.37 per thousand. And that's down from 0.39. So again, the parking requirements are even coming down for uh, these types of uses. So I think where we're at here is more than enough and you know, good for them to market to different tenants. Okay, anybody else from the board have questions on this testimony at this time? Anybody from the public have questions on this testimony at this time? Hearing and seeing none. Counselor? Thank you. I have one final witness, Michael Pasolano, professional planner, to just kind of give the board an overview of the planning perspectives of the, the several work variances that we're asking for this evening. Um, do you swear from the testimony that you're, about, that you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the record. Gladly. Uh, I'm Michael J. Pesolano. That's spelled P-E-S-S-O-L-A-N-O. -S -S Licensed professional planner in the state of New Jersey. Licensed in 1984. Licensed still in good standing. Uh, was recently before this board and qualified as an expert planning witness. I can go over the details again if you wish, but if you want to catch some TV tonight, <laughs> maybe you don't. <laughs> I leave it up to you. I, I could describe my credentials in greater detail. I'm not trying to be flipped. I'm not yeah. sure that microphone's on. I'm barely used to Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe. Okay. Am I coming across better now? Thank you. Yep. Appreciate that. Yep. Pointing that out. Yeah. Any Mr. questions on his qualifications? Anybody who wants to go deeper into his qualifications? I don't hear or see anybody. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Pasolato, you heard Mr. Reyes go. He, we ran through the several bulk variances that were triggered by this iteration of the design compared to what was approved two years ago. Can you kind of run through and give the planning rationales? Uh, whether they're C1, C2, and whether the board can comfortably grant these variances without any substantial detriments to the neighborhood or impacts on the zone plan? Yes, I will come to that, but it's my usual practice to distribute a planning exhibit that helps uh, set the stage for my comments. Uh, if we can do that now, then everybody will have the benefit of what I consider. So, can we mark these as one exhibit, which is yes. the, as the planning plan? Yes. We'll mark this as exhibit A 6. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to prepare for my remarks tonight, I looked at the application materials, uh, visited with the applicable zoning regulations, re-reviewed the master plan uh, as it relates to this particular uh, type of use and location. 
um, and reviewed the uh, review memos uh, by the board's professionals. Um, so th as stated uh, by our engineering witness, Mr. Reyes, uh, we have uh, four bulk variances that are requested. One is for slightly higher uh, wall height in the, the wall between um, the proposed building and the Hilton, pro Hilton Hotel property. We have uh, all, all of this is uh, type C bulk relief, of course. Um, the next one is for the driveway width, a 26 foot wide driveway for the cars and a 40 foot wide driveway for the trucks where 24 feet is required uh, as a maximum. We did eliminate one uh, offending parking space in the side yard, so that's now uh, compliant. And then the parking location uh, in the front yard is the fourth item. Uh, the, the exhibit at A6, now that everybody has it, shows on sheet one uh, an overview of the uh, site and the surrounding area. Uh, this was prepared in collaboration with John McDonough, professional planner. Um, and this exhibit shows the, the subject property um, in a yellow outline, um, obvious to see um, on this uh, front aerial image. Next, we have uh, a drone shot uh, taken by Mr. McDonough's office showing uh, the existing office building that sits on the property today. This was taken in uh, 2021. Then we have the similar um, drone perspective uh, taken today, and it shows the same uh, office building and its grounds, but interestingly, uh, an emerging uh, mixed-use property across Route 10, um, that being a redevelopment site and indicating just the nature of, of life today. Uh, demand changes, things change, uh, site utilization changes. So we, we come forward with this application to um, make the best fit possible for uh, this time and place for this particular project and modifications have been proposed. I won't re-describe them, but uh, they've uh, triggered some zoning relief as I described. Uh, I believe that all the all four elements of, of the zoning relief can be approved uh, pursuant to the C2 balancing test where the benefits need to be found to outweigh the detriments. And um, the benefits uh, may be obvious, but um, for the, the sake of the record, there are several public benefits that would accrue to uh, the approval of this project as designed and presented. Uh, purpose A would be advanced, purpose A of the municipal land use law, that is. Um, this project uh, promotes the general welfare because it delivers a permitted use that's a critical link uh, in the logistics supply chain. Uh, the amendments here uh, have been described as responsive to market demand uh, in the current moment. Purpose G would be advanced, and that is to uh, provide for a variety of uses in appropriate locations according to the needs of all New Jersey citizens. And this is advanced because this project provides a logistics facility at a transportation node. I'm talking about the intersection of Route 10 and 287, um, just a short distance away, with excellent connectivity to the regional highway network work overall. Purpose M is uh, also advanced. This is uh, to promote the efficient use of land. Uh, the project uh, clearly promotes the efficient use of land because it involves redevelopment of a previously disturbed site and puts uh, an underutilized property, commercial property, back into productive use. Purpose I is the final purpose, um, and that is to promote a desirable visual environment. We're offering a, a contemporary class A institutional grade building with aesthetic appeal and great landscaping. Um, you heard uh, that that can be enhanced even further um, per Mr. Uh, Reyes, uh, and it will have the appeal of a, of a newer office building. It will definitely uh, smack of newness. As to the uh, detriment that might accrue to the granting of these variances, um, the width of the driveway uh, was, uh, I think, adequately addressed as to its need. Um, and it is certainly a, uh, appropriate uh, for this type of use to have uh, wider um, entrances so that trucks uh, can maneuver um, in and out of the site appropriately. Um, 
I also don't see it as particularly impactful uh, to any property nearby, given its location uh, on the site right at the end of uh, Hilton Court. The uh, front setback relief um, is an issue that is kind of hanging on how you interpret the the frontage, and I accept that the uh, board professionals uh, believe that frontage lies within any roadway. Um, in fact, the, the definition of front yard says as much, um, so I'm not disputing that. But uh, we have a, a building that is uh, closer to Dryden Way. Um, there is a, a ramp that um, joins Dryden Way with Route 10. Um, not sure if that is quite counting in the same way as Dryden Way. The, the purpose of, of setback regulations are so that there's not a sense of crowding. And this very nominal uh, point where the building pokes into the 100 foot, I'm sorry, the 150 foot setback uh, oriented to Dryden Way um, is uh, nominal, I think. And the fact that it can be buffered by uh, fast growing evergreen species um, it will be very hard to perceive that that is, is a deficiency um, once the building is, is built and the landscaping uh, in place, I think. The, um, to the parking location being in the front yard, again, um, that is an issue that comes from the, the need to have parking and loading uh, around a building that will sit in the center of the site. Uh, this particular site is unusual in that it's surrounded on three sides uh, by um, public ways. So uh, there's a great difficulty in putting um, parking in a complying, conforming location. What's interesting to note, though, is that um, in the corner of the site closest to, to Dryden Way, um, Today, there's there's parking pretty close right up to the lot line there. Um, and because of the, the placement of the building, turning that into a front yard instead of a side yard, um, we have actually less parking than is there today mm -hmm. in that particular corner. So it's an interesting uh, swap out, I see. But I, I don't see the um, placement of parking there, again, with adequate screening rising to the level of a substantial detriment for anyone. You might see it, you might not. Um, very, there's no building on the other side of Dryden Way that would be uh, observing that. The next building is quite distant um, going down Dryden Way. So there's really uh, no neighbor to be substantially impacted by that um, setback uh, deviation. The final item is the, the wall height relief. Um, it, this is an engineering um, question more than a planning question. The, the wall height uh, to address the grade changes uh, is needing to, to pop above the, the four uh, foot height limit um, by 0.89 feet. Um, I regard that as a de minimis uh, deviation and so it could not possibly rise to the level of something substantial uh, in my professional opinion. Um, as to the impact on the, the zone plan and the zoning ordinance, the second prong of the negative criteria, uh, we're offering a uh, permitted use which on its own advances the general welfare and the zone plan uh, of the township of Persephone. The minor bulk relief that's required um, has been explained uh, for its need, so I see uh, no basis for finding that any of this relief would uh, produce a substantial impairment of the intent and purpose of the zone plan or zoning ordinance. In conclusion, the application remains uh, in substantial conformance. I didn't mention, but uh, most of the higher tiers of compliance are satisfied by this application. Um, so I want to underscore that in my final remarks. Uh, the plan amendments respond to market demand and enhance the efficacy of this development itself. I submit to you respectfully the statutory criteria for all relief have been met and approval is warranted. Thank you. I'm ready for your questions. Members of the board have any questions on this testimony at this time? Christine, do you have? Uh... No, I don't. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. 
anything there. I'm just assuming, and I guess this goes more to the lawyer, that, that you're going to agree to comply with uh, the rem any future remarks from the from the fire officials because we want to clear up that to yes. make sure that that's satisfactory and that you would work with the, uh, the forester on the landscaping and trying to attenuate any sounds that might be coming from there to the hotel. Uh, again, I don't know what the requirements are with a hotel versus residential. I know what residential requires. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Since those are not those problems. Okay. Um, any members of the board? Gordon, you have nothing? Nothing. No? No one else? All right. Are there any members of the public who have any questions of the planner on this testimony at this time? Hearing and seeing none, uh, I assume that that's your case. That is our case. This closes the evidentiary portion of tonight's. Well, I, wait a second. I got to ask. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak in opposition to this application, in support of this application? Hearing and seeing none, now this closes the evidentiary portion of tonight's case. Uh, do people want to discuss this or is somebody willing to make a motion? I can make a motion. Mr. Dadich. A motion to approve application number 23 colon 530, Onyx Equities to Hilton Court, Block 202, Lot 3.10, amended preliminary and final major site plan major soil moving permit to construct a warehouse facility as per the conditions noted here. So what conditions? So the conditions I have is that the applicant will install safety fence of four feet on top of that, the retaining wall um, that was 4.9 feet. So that's, that'll just be in addition to that variance. Um, the applicant will comply with any additional fire department comments and with township department reports as discussed tonight the applicant will provide the previous njdep permit for the prior approval and will be required to obtain any additional njdep permits um, the ch a chain will be installed at the property line for the emergency access drives um, the applicant will revise the EV and ADA spaces, will comply with the GPI comments, and will work with the board engineer to address same. Additional landscaping and screening along the frontage of Hilton Court will be installed, uh, and will, the applicant will work with the township forester on that. And will com applicant will comply with the Morris County Planning Board letter regarding fire truck turning radiuses will provide revised plans regarding parking spaces and the location of the front yard setback. And I think that's it. One thing that often goes without saying, but should probably be stated, is that there'll be no off-site parking, that no, no stacking of trucks out on Hilton Court or anything like that. I that would could even park in there, but that's fine. Right. I mean, it, it's... Uh, I've... Mr. Chairman, I, I, I know Mr. DiPiero always asks this about which way the trucks are going to go for demolition, that they don't go to, uh, uh, north on 202 and they get right to Route 10 to 287, avoiding the schools. I think he usually, he usually has a question. Yeah. But Those are good questions. Yeah. Right. We, just, we, you, we represented you've Mr. Done it before, so last time. We're not going to use Route 202. Yep. Okay. It's not going to go up on campus and go towards Dryden, Route 10, right. and Thank on you. the highways, not, not 202. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. And anything that was previously can approved that's not inconsistent with this application will still be required to comply with Correct. it. Good. That's a good thing. I was thinking about that. All right. You happy with that? I'm good. All right. Do I have a second? Second, Matt. Nora, would you call the roll, please? Yes. 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 Politano. Yes. Sure. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. It was really appreciated. 
is not in love with her. Is there anything else that needs to come before our board tonight? Anybody have anything they need to bring before us? I heard rumors that we might be uh, missing our board of adjustment chairman soon. Uh, he may be moving on June 1st. You didn't hear it from me. <laughs> So, just you may be tasked with board? something. Because he's, uh, I don't think he's made it official yet. You got a free night on Wednesdays? <laughs> ready to adjourn. All right. Nothing else there. to come before the board. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn? Yes. Anybody Second. opposed? Second. Enjoy the evening. Yeah.